Hello, everybody. How's it going? How's it going? Yo. So, I am going to uh, probably be doing some studying tonight, which involves listening to some music and studying from what I've done this week. Right? So, what I'm going to do now is this is something that I would normally do with anything that I study. Let's say that we just went back to like a previous sketching book page. If I wanted to actually learn something from this page, I would go back in here and then days or weeks after and see if I actually retained any of the information that I was trying to teach myself. Right? If I am able to, then I did something right. And I learned something and I progressed in a way with my own, you know, like sketching in my knowledge. But I do like going back constantly and just revisiting things and seeing if, you know, like little tiny things, like little methods that you came up with, if it becomes instinctual, if it's something that actually fits, you know, like I constantly go back and I do this with my sketchbooks. Uh, the reason being is because I want to see if I am progressing. I want to acknowledge if I'm going to be progressing in my abilities. If I'm not, then, you know, there's something that I need to adjust. <clears throat> All right. So if we are going to start off our lesson for tonight, I need you guys to hit this little share button. Let's get that up to about 25. 25 shares, and then we start our lesson for tonight. How about that? You guys hit that button 25 times, and I will start our lesson. And we can start talking about whatever you guys feel like drawing. Like, So, once we get to 25, we'll start our lesson. So what do you guys want to learn tonight? Or this morning? Like it depends on where you guys are at, right? What do you guys want to learn? I've been working on like the shoulders and you know like working on this little section of the chest. So and the forms and working on how to like, you know, like simplify that. So that is the part of the body that I've been focusing on lately a lot. But it doesn't have to be just what I want, you know? It can be what you guys want to do, too. Poses and weighing. Ooh, we have been talking about poses a lot. We need 25, guys. We need 25 shares. So hit that share button, and then, we, yeah, we can go into that. Since we have been doing a lot of anatomy poses and stuff would be... How to like weigh a character and their posing would be actually a good one. Those are a lot of the concepts that I learned through learning a little bit about animation and motion and movement. And, you know, I think I can import you guys with some cool knowledge. Mm-hmm. All right, we need five more. Oh my God, you've done, you did the the hand challenge, Shadow. I've been doing the hundred hand challenge all day. I'm only at thirty seven. Oh, 
Oh, that's awesome, by the way. First of all, that's amazing. All right, we need five more, guys. Five more, and then we can start their lesson. There you go. 25. Okay, cool. So let's start off our lesson with weights and balance in your posing. Okay. So the way that I learned how to do this, right, uh, was with this very simple method. Uh don't over don't over complicate the character right our character's body is going to be simplified to this simple shape this shape is very easily just a little bean bag with very simple legs the reason that i like simplifying my posing to pretty much this is because from here you can do this little same like little like pincer type of like feel to it for the arms and for the legs and you can get a lot of different expressions from just that okay so we are going to focus on just simplifying the body to this extent we are not going to include a head Mostly because that's a very subjective, like, size-wise, depending on what you want to do. And we're going to be focusing mostly on the bodies. So, but how do you make something look balanced? How do you make something look like it's uh, sitting flat on, a, you know, like, on the floor? Like, how do you make it look like it needs to stand out? Like, why is it that some people are able to draw, like, characters in any perspective like that? make it look really easy while I can only draw characters like this, right? Why is it that some people can draw like this, but I can only see things like this? Well, what we are going to be focusing on is the understanding of why you can only see it like that, how you can improve like your skill set to be able to do this so you don't draw flat. This is flat. This is 3D. Okay. And then let's let's focus on that first. That's gonna be the first thing. Like so our foundations. Foundations. And I talk about this quite often. Well what happened here? There you go. Our foundations for anything character based right, is going to be a combination of perspective right, perspective will play a gigantic role in this, but also that combined with your knowledge of anatomy. Right, your knowledge of anatomy is going to play a gigantic role in this as well. Right, not just like knowing how to draw a feature, but actually knowing what you are drawing based on a skeletal system. Right, like knowing that things that you are drawing are based more off a skeletal system rather than the style. Like, when you're just constantly focused on drawing a certain style, let's say that you like, draw like drawing your eyes all square because it's easy. And you draw your eyes like triangles because, you know, why not? You know, but then you get asked to draw that as a, like a profile and then you just freak out because you can't understand how this shape could be made into a profile size shot, right? So you're like, uh, 
is it this? And it would be something like that, by the way. <laughs> but it becomes more complicated than it really needs to be. When you understand the combination of anatomy and perspective, that's when you start getting an understanding that, for example, an eyeball is a sphere, right? And all those hemispheres that you see can be used to map out your eyelashes, your eyebrows, your... So the combination of these two provide you all the elements that you really always like to draw. Like people like to draw really voluptuous lips all the time, right? So the only thing that you have to remember is that these lips are just basic shapes, right? These are still just basic shapes, but we overthink this. We think that since we have to try to draw it similar to somebody else, we have to like draw it specifically in a certain fashion. But it's not the case. Like once you learn how something is constructed, everything else like style and detail can come and be secondary to that. Kind of like you would like with the coloring style or uh, the line work that you would do on something, right? Like that becomes secondary to an understanding of what you're drawing. So you can have the basic shape for a mouth, right? And in one, I need to have something very cartoony and very like voluptuous. I'm going to draw my lips really voluptuous. I understand that that is just my base shape with extra lips created by creating a lift in the upper lip and then giving my inner lip a little bit more spacing, right? That's how I get something more like a voluptuous lips. But if I just wanted something cartoony, I don't even have to add lips, right? It could just be something like that. But me understanding how the mouth is shaped allows me to draw this in a quadrillion different ways without me really having to worry about overworking it, over detailing it. The concept of a mouth is a concept that just spans through every style. And, and this, all this is just based on a very basic concept of perspective and understanding how to cut into your shapes. Right? This exercise will teach you how to draw a mouth in every angle that you need to. Just cut a hole inside of a sphere. That's all you really need to do to learn a little bit more about how the like face holes work. That's like, that's honestly like the easiest way that you can focus on that, right? Okay, so anyways, I think we were like, uh, we lost like track of things here. Okay, so the foundations for character-based things is perspective and anatomy. When you combine them, you're able to take not just the ability to draw character, but you're able to draw that character with dimensions, with depth, with floor, with dynamic posing. So let's move on to the actual like shapes that we are going to be using to be able to manifest this. Basic shapes for 
easy body structures. Okay, so most of the easiest body shapes that you can do are going to stay relatively simple. One of my favorites is the beanbag, right? That's the one that I advocate the most. The reason that the beanbag is such a strong component for something like a body is because it already has a natural squash and stretch. One side is always going to be slightly overlapped, which lends itself really easily to separating the body into the segment that you need. Right? So these crevices already provide you a lot of information that help you map out your shapes a little bit better. It doesn't even have to be that severe. Right? It doesn't have to be like an overly abundant like curvature. It just has to be slight, but it's still there. So the beanbag is a very, very good shape to create, you know, like body structures. You can always add more elements if you want to see what it looks like when you start adding more elements like arms and legs. You just start adding them from the points of angles that you need. The legs come out of those little pockets that you draw. So this is a very simple way to structure your legs, even if you have like four certain things. Right? The beanbag is a very, 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 very easy shape to actually draw in the first place. So it's very easy to manipulate that into different body shapes incredibly easy. Okay, so that is one of my favorite ways to start a body. Another very easy way to draw a body is uh, a more loose an animated way, which consists of drawing a shape for your upper, for your rib cage. Doesn't matter what shape will you draw, by the way. It can be a sphere, it could be a circle, it could be a triangle, right? And then for the lower body, you do a very like pincery thing like we did back up here. It's going to be just like a half moon or like little tiny sites. Okay. Each one of these sides can be moved in any direction you want. And that is going to be your legs. Okay. So when you get used to how to play around with these type of shapes, it becomes really easy to map these out into actual bodies. And then once you understand your basic shape for your, for your pose, then you can add your knowledge of anatomy on top of this so that you can start drawing things with proper anatomical structures. Right? So it doesn't have to stay within the parameters of that skinny little line. It can still be a consistently like detailed character. It just means that this is the initial body structure that you decided to go with. You can always use the simplicity of this to help you 
draw all the little features and stuff like that that you want on your character before you worry about any sort of detail. It's, this is a very, very easy way to come up with cool poses that you never would have actually come up with because poses like this aren't something that people normally think about. So this is another, the different way to go about it. It's just a basic shape and then swirlies. This literally like a tooth or something like that. This is the, my second favorite way to draw body shapes. Right? So I would call it... What, what, what do you even want to call it? Do you want to call it like... the? It's like a molar, right? Like a tooth. Like if you like took a tooth out it would kind of look like that so we'll call it the molar method for now for now we'll just call it the, the molar method for now it's it's a to be determined name feel free to suggest them uh Okay, so the third way that I like to actually draw my shapes is by creating, what is this going to call, it, it's more like, like drawing like a box, and I know this is going to sound weird because I've said that boxes are not like the thing that I like people to focus on because they give like a really rigid, you know, approach to a drawing, but once you start actually learning how to draw through your shape, right? Once you start learning how to draw through your objects, and you can see the front and the back of your designs, it makes it really easy to learn how to map out the front and the back of the rib cage for things, which makes it really easy to do with a box. Now, this is not something that I would recommend people to do uh, when they're starting, especially if they're trying to like learn how to like draw more, um, more fluid. I would never recommend for them to do something like this or learn how to like draw like this because this is a very stiff and very analytical way of like approaching your drawings, right? This. Like way of approaching it would be something that I would do if I wanted to like recreate like an actual real pose or be able to replicate something that I'm seeing somebody else draw. Like that would be like my base as opposed to something like this that I would do if I wanted to create something more dynamic and something that tells a story. And something like this, if I wanted to actually create something that I needed to restructure and be able to redraw over and over in different methods. All right. So while I finish this drawing, I see that we have 200 people in the chat, but we only have 25 shares. So that can't happen. Uh -uh. Let's get that to 70 shares. If you guys can get it to 70 shares... We will continue and I'll give you guys some more some more tips while I finish this one up, okay? So the trick to doing it with a box is that it makes really, really, really easy simplification of where one side of the body is to the other, right? It makes it incredibly easy because it's just right there. Again, that only really works if you're able to draw through your shapes in a comfortable way. So, once we learn how to draw through like that, it's going to make our lives a lot easier. All right, you guys kicked. That was quick. Woohoo! 
it. You guys are awesome. Thank you. All right. So you guys must really be enjoying the lesson. <laughs> All right. So in starting with this, the reason that I like doing it like this as well, though, is because it gives you like the upper part as one perspective. And then I bend it a little bit so that I have a different view from the bottom. So it gives me that same concept as over here that we talked about with the bendy and the stretchy part. We have a bendy and a stretchy part. So essentially, we am, all I'm doing is simplifying this. Instead of seeing it like a rounded shape, I'm seeing it more like a box. That's essentially it, right? And it makes it really, really easy if you start simplifying the upper part like a sphere and then the bottom part more like a box. It just makes it look so much better and it's so much easier to be able to draw proper anatomy coming from that. So the trick is to just start learning how to combine your shapes and your methods so that you can actually like understand everything. And it's very hard to do it from just learning one way of drawing. You need to like actually study very several, several ways to draw things and the approaches to them so that you can actually get better at it too. You also have to uh, get past all the regurgitated bullshit that people just regurgitate in the lessons, right? Like the one thing that I find myself uh, fighting against a lot whenever I'm actually trying to help someone get better is having to teach them that they have to unlearn a lot of the stuff that they got taught, right? Like a lot of the things that you get taught is just uh, horrible. And, and I don't say that lightly. I, I don't say that to be like a jerk, but in my experience, it's it's the teachers that just try to regurgitate the same information that they got taught in school, right? Like the whole like Loomis method, the five eye measuring and 10 head talls and nose, like all the very basic knowledge, right? All that stuff that they try to teach you as a beginner, this is insane to try to teach someone how to spatially like space things out with their like, eyes. Like I never understood this as a beginner. I was never able to replicate this, right? Like you could tell me to draw a head a million times, but since I didn't know where things were supposed to go, sometimes my eyes would be like super closed and it's like together or sometimes they'd be like super far apart or like one of them would be bigger than the other, you know, like because I didn't understand what I was drawing. I was just trying to draw something cool, right? I was just like, at this point, I was like, shit, as long as I draw something that doesn't look horrible, I'll stylize the hell out of it, you know, like just call that my style. And, you know, then I have something that I can work with. You know, we're always aiming for that like validation in some way so that we can validate to ourselves that you can do this as a living, you can do this as a career, we can do this as a hustle, we can do this as a hobby. You know, like we are constantly looking for that like validation. But in the search for that validation, a lot of people skip understanding their very true foundations of their art. You know, so a lot of us skip learning how to draw something in perspective. Or even how to draw something with depth. Like just something with depth in general is very easy to draw in a couple different ways. Like you can do like dimensional drawing like, you know, like this. That is my favorite way of doing it. But you can also do that with shadows. Right? You can do that with cast shadows. You can do that with line work. Just by thickening my lines, I can create depth. 
through contrast as well. Right? I can create depth in a ton of different ways. You just have to get used to a way that works for you and then go from there. If you're like a like a realism person, you're going to go with this one. You're going to want to go with like the shadows and contrast and lightings and stuff like that. If you're more of a character designer and something that you want to create is more character-based stuff, don't worry about shading. Don't worry about this. Worry about visualizing things like this, okay? Focus on practicing your spare time on drawing very simple shapes like this and getting used to drawing through your objects, right? Try to place an object inside of that object. See how that looks, right? See how you can, if you can actually do that. Then take those elements that you're drawing and try to slice them. See what you can do to create your inner like vision to be able to actually see all this stuff as kind of like a sculpture, right? At one point, it's going to get to the point where you're not seeing a line. At this point, I'm seeing a shape. It's very rare that I'm drawing anything anymore and at this point in my life, and I'm not constantly thinking of the actual shapes that consist of right a leg, a shoe. Anything that I want to draw is going to have a shape from this point on. And that is how you guys should visualize things too. Right? If you get to the point where you can start visualizing things like this, posing and all these sorts of um, drawings that are nice and flat for you are no longer going to be like that. You're going to be able to take a very, 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 very basic shape like a beanbag. And instead of drawing something flat and even, right, take this, shift it, and now you have something a little bit more interesting. You're not making one side bigger, one side smaller. You're essentially just rotating this within an imaginary spinner. So if we have our little spinner, right, we have our character over here. I can have my legs connected to any two of these, right? And it's always going to look balanced. regardless of where you put the light. So you can do that thing, same thing with a box. You can do that same thing with whatever shape you want, you know, whatever is easier for you. But whenever I'm drawing any character, right, if I need a pose that's going to be nice and balanced, I try to keep it within parameters like these. As long as my legs touch two points in that box, it will look like a balanced pose. It doesn't have to be, it can be in the inside, it can be on the outside. It normally tends to work really nicely. Even if, let's say we have a character that's almost out. It tends to actually like work really, really well. So whenever you are posing your character, you can always start with just where they're going to be standing. So have your character 
if you're going to want to draw something that's not flat, start with like a little box in perspective or something. Then plant your character. Like, let's say that you're going to have the surge, destroy your body. Keep it simple, right? Keep it simple. And then connect literally these little pincers coming out. Just connect them to two points in this whole structure. Doesn't matter where you put them. Match the perspective for the feet. And you can have really cool dynamic posing. <laughs> That's going to look right. Even if it's weird, it's going to look right. See what I mean? Like, you can move it around all you want. You can even have some floaty ones. Ta -da. And it's going to look like it's balanced. Um, I don't know. That That's just a trick that works um, in many different directions. Like, even if you are pointing away from yourself... Say we're looking from the bottom to a character. Let's see. I've been watching a lot of drag. <laughs> right like setting your perspective point at the beginning is going to keep you from drawing ever again just flat like you're never going to draw flat again because you're always going to give yourself a slight angle Right? You're never going to draw flat again. We shall never, ever, ever draw flat characters again, regardless of the angle that we draw in. We just don't do that no more. Right? Because it's easy to move our characters now, because now we understand it. Now, all the 200 people that have been watching my stream know how easy it is to make a dynamic pose because it's not a secret. It's not like a fantastical like skill that's not easily learned. Just take your very basic shape and then just do 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 do. Your head is also a very basic shape, right? So understanding not basic shapes is step one, right? That's step one. Like this is understanding that your body is basic shapes is step one. Right. So your body is basic shapes a step one. This is where perspective plays a role. Now, anatomy is when you can take that and learn how to break it down into muscle structures. Like you take that same pose, right? And anatomy is when you like understand how to take those basic shapes and make those into what you require for your character. All 
right? So that is what anatomy does for you. Anatomy is what allows you the ability to make something look stylized because you need you need to know how something is constructed to be able to deconstruct it like if if I don't know how to make an eyeball like if I don't know that this is an eyeball and eyelids and stuff like that right if I didn't know that, then my knowledge and ability to draw a different eye is limited only by how many different people I have copied, right? That would be my limitation to knowing how to draw an eyeball. As opposed to knowing the concept of my eyeball in my eyelids being these little hemispheres, at this point I can do styling and then just take that knowledge and just draw any eye that I want. It doesn't have to be. I am no longer limited by a style. At this point it can be anything that I want because the concept of the eyeball and just the eyelid being different is the only thing keeping me from drawing something different. So, you know, the same thing happens with structure. So it's very important to know your perspective Right, Your perspective is what's going to make your characters look really dynamic. But if you don't know your anatomy on top of that, it's going to be really hard for you to be able to create super, super dynamic characters. So that's why it's actually difficult to, to become a character designer. Because it's not easy to learn how to do all these things. Right, It's not easy to just learn how to simplify such a complex shape as the human body. And that is why all these jobs are so coveted by so many people. It's just not necessarily the easiest to learn how to like generate all these concepts and at the end of the day, be able to combine them to be able to generate really nice illustrations. Because even if you do know how to draw these things, right? Even if you do know how to draw them, knowing how to market the skills to draw, like, to use these is really hard. Because most of the time when people spend so much time, you know, learning how to draw these things, they don't really focus on learning how to actually sell them, how to sell those skill sets, how to sell like that marketability. So, you know, it, it's just like being an artist is hard. Yeah, if it was easy to be an artist, so many more people would be it. But it's not. Being an artist is really, really ridiculously hard. And it's just something that, you know, uh, it's hard to explain to people that think it's just drawing doodles and stuff, right? Like when someone tells me that, oh, your job is just drawing little doodles. Oh my God, it infuriates me so much. Like, it honestly infuriates me so much because it's so hard to do what we do. 
and to do it efficiently, it's even more hard, right? Like, I don't think people will ever really understand, unless you actually live it, how incredibly hard it is to be able to just stand out from so many other talented artists. And when we don't feel like we are at that level and we don't feel like we like deserve to be there, like, you know, sometimes I feel like that still. You know? I know that I am at the at that level, I'm competing with people at that level. But I still don't feel like I deserve to be here. See, at this point, once you understand this concept, you can just draw things going in different directions and it's just going to look right. Like, I... I don't know how to explain what happens once you start learning how things connect. It becomes a lot more accurate. Even even when you do do crazy like weird like poses like this, it just ends up looking a lot more accurate than even if you like uh, like oh man, I like, how to explain it? Like when it clicks it clicks and it's just beautiful. Like, it feels like whatever you draw, you can make into something. And that all comes from understanding and having knowledge, right? That's all knowledge. That's not like the... The confidence doesn't come from me having drawn this a million times. It comes from me understanding very basic key points that will always make my drawings look accurate. If I know my rib cage has a couple points that are going to be the key factors, right? To me, a key factor in the rib cage is this little ribbit, like little divot in the middle. So I always draw that in every single one of my shapes whenever I'm drawing a rib cage, right? The second thing that I'm always focused on is the front middle part because that's where my collarbone is going to end up. If that's where my collarbone is, that's going to be from here to the edge of my rib cage. This is going to be where my neck comes in and my trap muscles go to the edge. Right? So within this spacing of my rib cage, I have to have my neck and a little wing that connects to the side of my collarbone. It kind of looks like a funnel, right? So if we have, let's say we have our rib cage and we had a funnel at the top. <laughs> it's kind of like an eggplant. Cool. That actually works really, really nice. That might actually be a, like, a very easy way to describe it. Okay, let's have uh, this shape in general. It's like a nail eggplant, right? Our head would be up here. Our shoulders would be right here. Our shoulders connect at this pivot in the front and in the back. Right? From here, from my armpit to the divot, we connect that to make our breast tissue. And then we have our lower pectoral that comes in underneath that. Okay. So now my chest is really, really cool because now I have my I have my muscle fibers going into my shoulder, right? So it's essentially broken down into two big shapes. Now, if you're drawing a female shape with breasts, you're going to do very similar concept, right? You're going to go from your shoulders underneath your shoulders. 
you're going to have your breast sitting normally on top of the middle part of the, of the ribbit, but it doesn't always have to be. Right? Use this middle divot to divide it so that you can make things a little bit easier. Like having smaller areas to work with allows you to be able to map things out a little bit better. Know what I mean? Okay, so let's see. All right. Yeah. So if you understand, if you are going to get go into posing, you need to understand your rib cage. And you need to understand your hip bones. If you can manage to understand these two elements, just these two elements, don't worry about the arms, don't worry about the legs, don't worry about the body, don't worry about the head, don't worry about anything else. If you learn how to work these two elements in a body by simplifying them to this extent, right? This will be your ticket into character designing, posing, animating, and everything else. This simple breakdown of the body is going to allow you to draw anything you feel like drawing. Okay? It doesn't have to be that. It could be a sexy lady. Right? Hee 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 at the beach. But it can be anything you want. Once you understand this basic concept, you can distort these two elements to create any sort of design you want. It could be a big, tough dude with like really strong arms. Right? It could be a person with really tiny legs. Like, at this point, it's just your imagination that's going to, like, play a key role. And you can use that to create characters that are even more simplified still. Right? Understanding this basic body structure of just the key parts of the rib cage and your hip bones allow you a lot of play when it comes down to simply even drawing a little bit more dynamic. Right, just the rib cage and hip bones give you a lot of play when it comes down to posing. So understanding these concepts is incredibly valuable to be able to like progress and be better as a designer. I have to go to sleep, but thanks for doing this. I love everything I've learned tonight. Oh. Oh, you're thanks, man. Like little comments like that make me so happy. Like it honestly, like it makes my night so much better. Like you guys make me smile so much.
<laughs> Let's see. Yeah, like keeping it simple, keeping it nice and simple is going to be the key factor in being able to learn how to do this a little bit easier each time, right? Don't go overboard and think that you have to learn every aspect of anatomy at the same time, right? For example, legs are hard. Legs are very complicated, right? Because legs are normally taught in a very specific way, right? They teach you how to draw a leg like this. That is how they teach you to draw a leg, right? This is technically not wrong. You know, it, it is a pivot and this, but if you don't get taught how it actually connects, then it's going to always be really hard for you to maneuver around this shape. The leg, essentially consider the leg like the top thigh and your kneecap is one big element, right? The, like entirely, like your kneecap is also part of your top thigh. Think about it like that. Then your calf connects behind your kneecap and it goes down. Right? So it's behind. Think about it like this. It's not underneath, it's behind. This can only pivot forward as far as the kneecap allows it, right? It can only go this far, otherwise it's gonna look like it's disjointed. As the opposite, when you bend it back, it bends at the kneecap and it goes back. So this allows you to take a normal leg, right? And it's easier to understand how something bends when you actually draw it like it's supposed to be created. Like understanding how the leg bends makes a lot more sense when it's actually placed in the right place. Right? That Does that make more sense than actually trying to rotate that over a sphere? Right? Like... Something like that doesn't give you much explanation. Like, yeah, you can still get to that same endpoint, but it's just so much easier to just draw two shapes, knowing that one connects behind it, and that just makes a much better leg, in my opinion. Because it's easier, too. It's like, it's just easier. <laughs> Like, it just, it makes so much more intuitive sense knowing that it's behind, right? Because even when you're looking at a leg from behind, now that I know that it's my thigh and then my calf is behind it, then it just makes more sense. Right? Like, hit that little heart button if I'm, like, making any sense at all. Like, if that makes any sense and you guys, like, if that makes at all, at all sense at all, get that little heart button. Sometimes I feel like I'm a crazy person. Look, like, you can take something as simple as this, right? And as long as you understand that concept of your thigh being one big section and your calf being behind it, even something as simple as that can be turned into more anatomical character. And you can always add volume to this until you get to the required character width. Right? Once you understand where something connects, then at that point you can always modify it. I can't find what? Oh. 
So again, let's go with our basic shape. We're going to go with some pincer legs. Cool. And that kind of looks like a cowboy to me. So we're not going to go with flat feet. We're always going to put it on a base, right? And then since we're drawing like a cowboy guy, we're going to have boots. Spurs. Uh, let's see. Maybe a big belt. And then let's give him a butt. Thigh, thigh, calf, behind, calf connects behind. So now he has that, and then let's give him a vest. Get my shirt. What you do in Rodgon? I am drawing poses. See, my ent <coughs> the entirety of my my studying lately has been on how to draw better poses. Like that has been my focus heavily, so that I can improve my storytelling, so that I can actually start drawing my own journal comic. Like what I want to do at some point soon is to just start making like a daily little comic strip based on the things that I do in my life. And not for like fame and fortune or whatever. I just want to do it because that's why I got into art. I got into artwork so that I could journal my life. Like that is the reason that I got into drawing. Like I deviated from that because people kept telling me that I was never going to be able to make a living with that. You know, and that might be the case. You know, but fuck it. I don't care. I'm going to try anyways. And I'm going to, you know, like satisfy that little urge that I had as a child. You know, because at 19, I consider myself a child. You know, at that point, I decided that I wanted to make this into my career. And I've been stubborn as hell. And I have, you know, like sacrificed and compromised on a lot of aspects of my career in order to be able to get to where I am. So now that I am at a skill level where I can actually take control of my you know, career, I'm going to do my best to be able to go back to those basic roots of what got me into art. And I'm going to preach. I'm going to do what I preach. Like I'm going to t follow my stupid little dreams and I'm going to make that happen. Right. Like that's just going to be the case. Like even if it doesn't make me money, like I want to do it because that's something that I've wanted to do. You know, if money comes from it, then great awesome if it never comes and it never sees a dime awesome i still did it and it's still something that most people will never have the ability to do so why not be super proud of that and then just go for it right like if you don't go for it like you're never gonna know you're never gonna like if you know i i find that like in not knowing is so much like not knowing if you could have succeeded is so much more painful than failing. And it normally takes way longer to get over. If like no regrets, right? <laughs> like, but it's yeah, like regret. Regret is horrible, okay? Like, whenever you, like, feel like you should have done something, but you never got a chance to. Or, like, oh, I've always wanted to do this, but I never got a chance to. Like, if there's something that you really want to do, and nothing's stopping you besides from, like, I don't know, maybe, like, calling in a day or, 
Like maybe you're just separated from someone for a little bit. Whatever. Go do it. Like life is way, way too short. Like way too short. Like I recently I recently came back from Scotland. Right? Like, I came back from Scotland because I was having anxiety attacks when I was going over there. You know, it, I, I decided to take a big leap of faith and I just went over, like, because I wanted to make a life with, you know, a beautiful woman that, you know, captured my heart over there. But it just ended up being a little harder than I ever expected it to be to relocate myself like that. So, upon coming back, I was very heavily, heavily, heavily depressed. Like, I felt like I failed at something that I finally wanted to do on my own that I've been wanting to, like, take control of for a very long time. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's taken me almost a month to be able to get back onto my own rhythm, to be able to feel like I am, you know, like, didn't fail. It was just a really cool experience that I got to endure with beautiful people that loved me and wanted to, like, look after me. So... Upon seeing it like that, it becomes a wonderful experience. But it's just a mental state issue, right? And most of the time, that is what is super hard to be able to to get into. Like, it's super hard to get back into, like, a really good mental state after you feel like you failed at something. And that's something that happens constantly with artists, and designers because we never think that we're enough we never think that we're doing quite as well as we normally think we don't give ourselves enough props we don't talk about ourselves enough we don't really like give ourselves the props that we probably deserve notice that even if i am drawing a relatively flat character my shoes still have depth right the angle in which I'm drawing the shoes is a very slight angle, but it's still an angle, right? It's never just flat. Always give your characters a little bit of depth. All right, we're almost done with this page. See, the real question is, is do we go for another one? Or do we not go for another one? Because I don't know. I don't know. Someone's going to have to convince me and, you know, like, make me want to stay here. Uh, So, yeah. Basic shape. Split in half. From this half, you can draw one pincer going this way, one pincer going the other. If you guys are wondering, like, how, why it's so easy for me to draw something to look accurate, right? It's not because I'm a magically, like, in, like artistically inclined person. Like, me understanding how a uh, body part connects does not make me an incredibly, like, uh, like, you know, talented artist. It just makes it so that I've memorized little tiny connection points here and there that help me do this. <laughs> I believe how to make money doing art. Hmm. And we can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that, that, that sounds like a good uh, infographic thing to do. So, how can we make money with art? Okay, so... This is going to be uh, a, a relatively interesting lesson, but let me let me put some music on first.
Alright, we're gonna listen to that one again. Okay. So how do we make money with art? So that's the ever knowing question, right? How do, how do we make the mula 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 when it comes down to our money? How the hell do we make money? Well, the way that I have experienced this in my career, the amount of money that you can actually create as an artist is going to be tied to your skill sets. Okay? It's going to be geared towards your technical skills. It's going to be tied into your marketing skills. And how hungry you are to make money. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> nom. Okay, so your skill sets are going to be broken down into the following things. Okay? Your skill sets are going to be, are you good at, we're focusing on art, remember, okay? So you're artistic. Okay? This is going to come down to drawing. It's going to come down to illustrating, but it's not the same thing. Okay. I would consider drawing is more towards like sketching and generating of visual development and illustrating would be more like a rendered finished piece. So something like a painting or digital illustration and stuff like that. Right? Your drawing and your illustrating are going to have subsets. Within these, you can have something along the lines of cartooning. Realism, abstract, uh, essentially anything style-based. Styles, okay? Right? Every style that you have, and you will have, you don't only have one style. Okay, you don't have just one style. You have tons of styles. You learn new styles, and uh, the average artist that does this for a living should be able to replicate many, 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 many different styles. Don't limit yourself to just one of these things. Aim to be everything, right? Aim to do all of this, not just one of them, all of them, especially if you're trying to do this as a career. Okay, so that would be your artistic skill sets. This can also be broken down into sculpting, 3D knowledge, so 3D modeling, lighting, photography. All these have subsets, right? All these are going to give you even more of a range of what you can actually do. So the more that you open up to yourself, you know, this is going to lead to many more opportunities and you're going to have a wider range of job opportunities. So the more skill sets, the more you have, 
the more employable you are. Value you have. Now, you don't have to master all of these. You don't have to know every single one of these. If there's a certain thing that you really do enjoy more than other, that's where you're going to focus most of your skills. But you need to understand that being a good, well-rounded artist is going to mean that you have to actually learn a little bit of everything. And everything is tied together. So once you learn something through its foundations, drawing, sculpting, 3D modeling are going to be based on the same concept of, you know, like your perspective and anatomy that is going to be the basis for 3d modeling and drawing in general especially as a character designer so these are going to be tied in together illustrating is going to take a lot of what you learn through 3d modeling photography with your you know references and everything and be able to tie that into your drawing skills to be able to create illustrations posters t-shirt designs, all that stuff, right? So then we go to technical skills. Okay. What technical skills do you need in order to be able to be successful in actually making manageable artwork that's going to be sell? So your technical skills are going to require something like Photoshop. So image manipulation software luckily for us most of the stuff that like you need to learn is already super intuitive because we do a lot of filters and stuff like that so image manipulation is photoshop uh procreate all that stuff Right? That is going to be a very basic technical skill. Normally, Photoshop is the key to learn because that's going to be the industry standard. So if you go work anywhere, this is going to be expected for you to be to know. Technical skills also include learning things like, um, what do you call it? Vector artwork. versus rasterized artwork. So vector artwork is the things that you use for logos and such that creates a mathematical equation that makes your line work not degrade whenever it gets smaller or bigger. Rasterized ones is like when you just draw something and scan it. Like the when you zoom in, you're going to find pixelation. When you zoom out, you're going to see it distort. If you make it too small, it's going to distort. If you make it too big, it's going to blur out. So that is a very key technical aspect to learn because anything from production to print will require you to know this. Okay? Learn... In design or a layout program. This is going to be useful for books, magazines, to make your own portfolio. Any any project that includes anything with print is going to require you to learn in design. So that is another technical skill. You have to be computer savvy. Yes, this all leads to digital artwork, but being computer savvy is incredibly important. Right? In a Mac and PC, being able to actually do your work in any sort of like, you know, like situation is going to be very important for you to be able to do. So when it comes down to your technical skills, having more is best. And it's going to come down to a lot of technology-based things. So it's going to have you really, really, really have to like, you know, like scourge the books and those YouTube videos to be able to learn all this stuff. 
Uh, but once you do, you become a much, much, much more valuable person when it comes down to being employed and actually as a freelance artist as well. You're going to become a lot more employable and you're going to be able to complete a lot more complicated projects than a person that does not have any of these skills and just knows how to draw. Like if you know how to draw, but you don't know how to scan something or take it into production or know how to digitally use it, it's a kind of it's just kind of pointless. Because you're not going to have any use for that artwork that you make. Or you will only be able to sell it once, which limits the amount of profit that you can make from your own creation. Uh, Hold on, guys. So, let's see. Uh, Okay, so from here on, on, we have to go to marketing skills, right? Like, as an artist, you have so many different hats. You have to have so many different hats that you have to be such, like, ah, marketing. See, this is going to be the part where most people fall under because at this point you have to be social media manager you need to understand how to communicate better especially with clients you have to learn HR skills uh, uh, slash like interrogator <laughs> you have to be like all hats right you have to be the CEO you have to be the boss and you have to learn the fine line between being cocky and being the best ever like you have to like ride that line all the time when it comes down to talking with clients because they need to know that they want to hire you, so they need to know that you're the best ever. But having that very, very slight cockiness to you it also makes it so they want to have that confidence in you. But if you go too much in either one of the directions, they either might not believe you or they might think that you're too arrogant. So you have to be very, very careful about that. You need to learn consistency. Right? Right? Effort over time equals success. That's it. No, I don't think that's how it would be written in math terms. I'm not a mathematician. You know what I mean. (laughs) There you go. Okay, so... So this, 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 this alone, like, is so much. You have to keep up with trends. You need to keep up with what's cool. So that's uh, something very valuable. You need to understand your audience. And you need to know what they want. Know what they want via a niche. Right? So all these skills are things that you need to know just to make yourself a valuable artist. Now, you don't need to know any of these to sell your art you all just got to be able to draw and then go somewhere to sell it but learning where you can sell your surf this is the marketing part right this is also how to sell your artwork is a huge component in marketing right and that normally leads to online shops 
links and stuff like that. So this is a huge component and combined with this and combined with this lead you to having a, 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 a chance to make money. Right? Having all these allow you the chance to open up the gate to be able to actually do this for a living. But actually doing that and then continuing it and not losing faith and not like wanting to like shoot yourself because you're like constantly stressed out because nothing's working and like nothing's like going the way you want and getting discouraged and you know, not generating what you want and having those unmet expectations. All that stuff plays a huge role when it comes down to making it as a designer. Like learning how to meet unmet expectations is absolutely like one of the most important things that you need to learn because not everything is going to go your way. Like, actually, more things than not will not go your way. So you have to realize that criticism and, you know, not things not going exactly how you want is not, first of all, it's not the end of your career. And second of all, it's not going to be as bad as you probably think. But it's hard to see that when you're all, like, stressed the hell out from having to do, like, the 20th revision to a client's work and not knowing how to communicate with them and tell them that they're going to have to pay more or you are, like, under-quoting people and you don't know, like, what you're supposed to do at that point and you're just like, ah. Right When you're like in the 20th revision of the 20th final, final version of final, final version of like, like at that point, you don't even want to draw anymore. You don't want to do anything for those clients anymore, but you're tied in because you are in a contract or whatever. See, those situations are the ones where you're like, you know, ability to communicate, ability to negotiate, ability to know your worth is going to come into play. But you need to know, you need to have all these hats on. And it's mostly because no one else is going to do it for you. Like, even if you get an agent, right? Let's say that you got an agent and you're like, ooh, this agent's going to sell everything for me. I don't have to do anything except create art. Nah. Nah, that agent still has to sell you. So they still have to see you as like this like pristine, art, like amazing artist. Right? They still have to be able to sell the fact that you are an artist. So you're going to still have to like put on that persona and be like, I am, even if it's kind of like faked and like whatever, you're going to have to be like, I am awesome. Because it's just a requirement because even they need to be able to sell the fact that you are a good artist. Okay. Bestest artist. Yay. Even if you don't believe it, they need to believe it. So it's going to be a big, big factor. Even if you just feel like it's not true at all. Like, oh my God. Even if you don't feel like it's anything sort of close to what you are as a person. You 
you still need to be able to live through that persona because that is going to be the thing that brings you more success. Right? Having people believe that that side of you is the person. And I know it's kind of like counterproductive to like just be like genuine and stuff like that, right? But it's just a necessary thing. Like you would never go with a lawyer that didn't think that they were the best. So why would you ever go hire an artist if they didn't think that they were capable of doing whatever imaginative task that you were going to set in front of them? Right? So even if you don't feel like you're necessarily the biggest thing, it doesn't matter, right? You have to aim to have people see you in the best light. Regardless of how you see yourself. Okay, people need to see your best persona, especially when it comes down to clients and your audience. Uh, hold on. Uh, what did I do with that? I'm trying to find my colors. I can't seem to find them. Oh, there it is. So yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. Like, it's not easy. Like, communication skills are hard. Like, when I had like my first mic, right? Like, the first time that I got on the mic, I straight up, like, was, like, fumbling over and over and over because it was just, like, like, I hated the way that I sounded on the, on the mic. It was just, like, ugh, cringing. Mm, oh yeah, and I also had my webcam on, so I was like constantly like I was constantly trying to like read out of my peripherals like my little notes and stuff like that that I had, right? So I had like notes like standing up with like stands and stuff like that, and I'm trying like my hardest to see them for my peripheral vision. While I'm trying to read these, you know, like, like lines. And still trying to draw something in front of people. Like, it was just like, it was daunting at first. Like, like I would stutter. I would say the wrong thing all the time. You know, it was like incredibly hard. But over time it's gotten to the point where I can just talk for hours, feel confident, even if I make mistakes, because it's just become second nature to be in front of a uh, mic. Blah, blah, blah. So let's see. So yeah, like I mean, when it comes down to actually like hustles that you can do, you can do caricatures. Caricatures are very, very, very 
easy way to make money when it comes down to going outside and actually being around human beings. If you just learn a very simple way of cartooning, you can go out and draw people and make a decent amount of money. Like that is how I made my living for a very long time. Like I would just go out, bring a piece of paper and then just draw people. Like even in a post-it, like a pack of post-its, right? It cost me like a dollar. I would grab a pack of post-its and a pen. So a dollar, maybe another dollar for a pack of pens, right? And then I would just go and I would draw everyone that I would see. I would just draw really quick little caricatures of people. Right? It's very simple caricatures of people. Give that to them. It took me 10 seconds to draw this, right? 10, 20 seconds. Give this to them. Normally, people go like, oh my God, this is so cool. La, 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 la. And then they'll give you some money. Do this at a bar. You're going to get free drinks. Right. You're going to get money people will just give you money straight up money they will give you their number if you are looking to uh find people to like uh, date and stuff like that and you know you'll generate a lot of friendships like that too and it's a very very fun thing to do especially if you want to get better at drawing people If you want to get better at drawing people, go draw caricatures and then just aim to have like a time limit. Give yourself like maybe like three to five minutes max for the caricatures. And no matter how it comes out, give it to them. Like no matter how horrible it is, draw it and give it to them. You'll be surprised at how amazing you will be received by just drawing someone and giving your attention to them. Now, don't be like, it'll get to that point, but don't be the jerk right away that is like drawing like, you know, like fat people, you know, like completely absurdly, you know, something like that, right? Don't do that until later. And don't draw skinny people like they're like barely on the page. That comes later. You learn how to do all that stuff later. <laughs> yeah, that's like the reason that like a lady like almost killed me. I have been doing this for like 15 years though, so like I know what I'm doing. I know the risks. Can I use characters to make portraits and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. You can make really cool detailed caricatures too. Like sometimes portraiture and caricatures gets to the point where it is like a combination almost, right? And it is beautiful whenever the two skill sets combine because it's normally super exaggerated caricatures with a very anatomically correct body or like structure. So it just becomes that much cooler of an illustration right it just becomes a much much more like cool structure and then when they exaggerate that fe like those features right like when these people create like these amazing mega exaggerated like caricatures it's beautiful to see Right. It's just wonderful to see an organically like created caricature from a super exaggerated position. It can go in many different directions. Like you can always make like a really stupidly large mouth. But a lot of the times 
when it comes down to caricatures, it's a matter of understanding the anatomy behind what you're drawing, right? If you're able to know the anatomy behind what you're drawing, then you can distort it. But if you just go in and distort things like without knowing where things are supposed to go, you're going to have a limited cap capability of doing so. Caricatures are very much like the playground for like animators in general. Now, caricatures is also one of those things that's very easy to learn, but it's very, very hard to master, right? Like, mastering caricatures is a very incredibly, like, almost, it almost sometimes seems like an unsurmountable, like, task. Because it's just, there's so much to apply to every aspect of the body like you have no limits to what you can create or push you can go into very 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 stylized ways of creating or you can go into more refined concepts behind portraiture and you know like realism so it's a very uh, open ended like section of art that is both also fascinating and amazing it's just super fun so i highly suggest that everybody does them right especially if you're an artist like if you're an artist and you're not doing caricatures like at parties and stuff like that just for fun like not for like money or whatever like just draw a couple people at any place you go to any place it doesn't have to be a complicated drawing just get their hairstyle and if they have like another particular trait, like if they have like a low cut dress or something, right? I get that. And then you're like, go up, give it to them. Boom. Hey, hey, I thought you were cute. There you go. You'll make them smile. You'll make their night better. If, if they're interested, they will talk to you. If they're not interested, they will point it to every single one of their friends, and at least you have higher odds of actually talking to someone just because you made someone's night a little bit better. <laughs> I've drawn people like this too, like without even a nose. Like, it, it's just fun when they have such a distinguishable hairstyle or something, right? Let's say that somebody has, like, pigtails. Somebody had pigtails. I could literally just draw that. Whatever connection point, like, if they had, like, bangs or something like that, right? And I could draw nothing else. Nothing. Nothing. Not even a face. And that would be a really cool caricature for someone. Like, if that alone makes you think of them, maybe they have, like, cool earrings or something, right? You could do that with a blank face. And it would still be something that that person would smile at. They would probably blush at. They'd be like, oh, my God, that is so beautiful. Yay. Right? They would like literally love it for the rest of their life because most people don't ever get enough attention from anyone else in the planet. And when you make them the center of your creative process for even a split second, that is like incredibly like, you know, like amazing to most people. Right. So it doesn't matter what you do. If you could draw a stick figure. And then just kind of make them look like them a little bit. 
And they would probably cherish this for the rest of their life. Because people just don't get random artwork from people. You know what I mean? Like, people just don't do that. So, it's something that you can use to lift yourself up. It's something that you can use to break out of, like, you know, any, like, ice that you feel like you are in a social situation. And it's going to be something that's going to get you in a lot of places. Like, I used to draw the bouncers at places. Especially if they were, like, you know, like, really full or whatever. I would just draw the bouncers. Right. I'd be like, there you go, dude. They had, like, facial hair or whatever. And then... By doing this, they would be like, oh, man, can you hook me up by, like, drawing my daughter or something, my girlfriend, blah, 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 blah. And I'd take 10 seconds to draw a generic character with their girlfriend, like, you know, like, hairstyle or something. Wee. And then I would be in the bar or the club or whatever in less than a minute. Yeah, so caricatures are an incredibly valuable tool when it comes down to to just being a general like artist, like it's just such a valuable skill set to have. And it just gets reinforced the more that you know anatomy. So if at first all you can do is draw characters and then just give them little slanty eyes, if all you can do is that, but it makes it look really cool, then do that. Just do that, right? When you get better and you learn how to draw eyes a little bit better, then you will go in and then you will draw the eyes however you feel like drawing them, right? When you develop more skills to be able to draw things with a little more detail, then you do so. But you work at your own progression and you work at your own time. Right? It doesn't matter which level of detail you want to create. Go with what you're comfortable at first so you feel proud of what you're doing and then move on to something that's going to challenge you. Once you move on to something that's going to challenge you, then it's going to be something that you're going to be even more proud of if when to conquer it. But it gives you something to work towards as well. Are you mostly cartoon artists? You know, I don't know if I consider myself necessarily a cartoon artist in general, but I would consider myself more of like an editorial cartoonist with tendencies towards animation. That's that's how I would describe my my art style. the first time in about like a month that I've been able to sit through my favorite soundtrack which is this one without feeling like absolute shit so I'm kind of happy that I'm like bouncing back to my normal self now 
Okay, so here, right? You guys saw me drew two, two eyes within this mask. The reason that this eye has this line is because this is where my nose bridge is. Right? That's where my nose bridge is. So that is why that line is there. This is also going to be where my nose comes out from. It's because of my skeletal my skeleton has this nose connection there, right? So from the top of that to the bottom of that, I got to create a shape. And that's going to be my nose. As long as it connects to the top and the bottom of that connection point, I can draw any nose that I want. Cool. This also has depth, right? So this has a top and it has a bottom. This goes around and connects back to my lip right up here. But it depends on how I want my mouth to go. This roundness of the mouth is normally an issue for people because they can't visualize the shape through. So an easy way to go about this is to go in back to where your nose canal is. We're going to go from the top of the nose. We're going to go all the way around like a little egg to the chin. Okay, this is going to be just like the face is going to have. You're going to have your middle part. And then this part is interesting. This part is going to tell you the limit of where your mouth can go, right? So your mouth can only go up to here. Now, you can exaggerate something and make it even bigger, but you would have to move that line up like a rubber band. Okay? You would have to naturally distort it to get to a different level. Like if you wanted like a joker smile, you would have to bring that line up. Right? So if you wanted something like a joker smile, it would be something like that. But if you did that here, you would have to do that on the other side as well. But what happens when you move something like this up? Well, our initial stage is right here, right? This is where our mouth is normally laying at its like passive state. Okay. This is where it's passively just laying. So this muscle is literally our cheekbone, like in this area right here. So when you move this up, this whole cheek compresses and it would move up and create a sort of push up. Right? So what happens when that happens is this. Let's say you have like a big joker smile. Your cheek that normally stops right here with your nose is pushed up and then it creates a cover for the eye. See what I mean? Like this mass covers a little bit of the eye at that point. It also means that this would essentially create negative space too. So that negative space right there is because your teeth wouldn't reach all the way to the edge of that mouth. Your skeletal system would essentially be like this, right? So even if your mouth is open that big, your teeth are only going to cover a certain amount of your mouth.
see what I mean? So that negative space is something that you pick up whenever you are drawing. If you're drawing a really big mouth, you're going to have more of that negative space on the sides. And even more so if you have like, like super mega exaggerated ones. So that is how you determine like how you draw this section of the face. This part has a curvature to it. That's why we draw this as an oval. So you understand that this has curvature and goes from one side to the other, one side to the other. And then also our chin has depth. Okay. So the lip has depth on its own. It goes down and then it goes into our chin. The side of our face at the tip of our eyebrows, I like to set the temple that leads to the back of the head. This goes down to where our mask was and it's a very easy guideline down. So the way that I see the facets of the face, the, you know, like, I was very actually broken down relatively simply. So that is kind of how I see my basic structure of my face. I see a flat side. I see a cutout that would be kind of like if you cut out a like a cylinder from a sphere right kind of like that same concept but here and then you lift the middle so that that is your nose cavity so that is how i view my sections i also divide this into thirds right most of my face is divided into thirds. The middle part of my thirds right here is where I put most of my features. So all my most of my features fit within that third part in the middle. Even my ears tend to go there. Okay. The bottom part is my mouth. The top part is my forehead. So I normally break down my characters like that. If I need to exaggerate a certain part, let's say we have like a little profile picture. If I need to make the jaw really big, I just move that feature zone up. And now I have a really strong jaw to work with. Right. If I need to move that down to make more of a kid character, so that alone, just knowing that that little tiny third of my feature section is literally so crucial to understanding you know where everything fits on the face like maybe doing that just helps you understand the face a little bit more right maybe that takes away the intimidation of having to know every single facet of the face like maybe i can just focus on the eyes eyebrows and how the nose connects. If I can focus on that, then maybe the rest of the face comes a little bit easier. Right? Maybe, maybe it just becomes a little bit easier when I just focus on a smaller section first. So 
So don't overwhelm yourself with thinking that you need to be able to understand every every aspect of your face. Start small. Start really small. Start with like a basic box and just try to figure out how things fit within that third, right? Within that third of your face, how can I fit my eyebrows, my nose, and my eyes? How do I learn to draw that in that third of that face? And then focus on your mouth. Okay, so now that I know that middle section, like I'm only going to focus on that middle section. So I'm not even going to draw my ears. I'm not going to draw anything. I'm just going to draw my little mask and I'm going to focus on drawing all my details on that little tiny section. Cool. Once I'm able to draw that in a couple different, like let's say I want to just the profile. Okay. Right? Once I'm able to do this, and just draw that section. Now I can be like, okay, now let's draw a mouth. What did we learn about the mouth? Okay, it connects to the top of the nose and to the chin. So I just got to determine where the chin's going to be. Cool. My chin's going to be right there, top of the mouth. And it creates a little oval. Oh, cool. Once I have that, now I can draw my mouth. Let's say, remember, we can exaggerate the mouth if we want by bringing that shape up, right? But at this point, well, let's just not worry about that. We follow the little guidelines to create the mouth, and that's already our chin. So we already know that that is going to be our chin. So our neck is going to be coming out of there. Our forehead then comes in. We determine how tall do we want our head to be? How, what styling do we want? And then from there, we just go on to the rest of our face. And that's just essentially how I break down most of my faces whenever I need to do something more complex. Like if I need to draw a face that's more complex than the average and I need to add more character to it, I'll just break it down into smaller sections. Like I won't try to attach every attack that middle section first and be like, okay, how can I make this cool section look like really, really awesome? Right? That's the important part of my drawing. If I can make that look cool, then everything else can be different. And then knowing how things connect to the body, for example, here, if I needed to draw a body for this, I know that my neck is going to connect to the back of my ears. So I got to find my ears and then I got to decide how my body's going to be posed. In this case, I, let's make a very dynamic angle. So I'll make my body that here. My collarbone will be right there. So that means that my neck to my collarbone, the other neck to the collarbone, and that means that my shoulders are going to be over here. By doing the little body technique things that we practice in the last hour or so, we will draw some leggies coming into a perspective. And then from there, we can just draw the rest of our body as well if we want. Probably a little bigger. There. 
And then if I wanted to add muscle tissue to this, I just got to segment my anatomy into my different sections so that I can start adding musculature to my design. But once I have that base figure in perspective properly, it's so much easier to go in and do any sort of changes like posing and stuff like that. So what we learned today, let's recap a little bit of what we learned today. And if you guys did not know, I do have books for sale. If you guys are interested in learning and actually repeating and drawing over my drawings, I do have a couple books for sale. I have a series of books called Art Block. And Art Block is a series of books with drawings such as these that allow you to take many lessons and get rid of all your art block right away, right? So if you guys are interested in drawing that or you guys just want to see some really cool pinup art, I do have a few books about that too. But today we learned how to position our characters a little bit easier by simplifying the process in which we see things, right? We learned that we never, ever, ever draw flat. We never do this. We will never ever draw like this again. We were going to instead create our drawings. If we only know how to draw like that, you're going to create your drawing and then you're going to take this flat line and you're going to shift it to the side. You're going to reach, reach, and then that's where you're going to draw your feet. And just like that, I have saved you from flat style drawing. You will never draw another line another drawing quite flat like this okay never ever 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 again will you ever draw like that now we just move the lines and then we draw it like that cool so that is the first thing that i wanted to remember you guys we learned a little bit about how to draw with your basics like perspective and anatomy and stuff like that we also talked a little bit about how to take your basic knowledge of perspective and be able to manipulate that uh how anatomy and how perspective work within your body structures and why you need to learn it right you need to learn perspective so you know how to position your stuff you need to learn anatomy so you know what to draw whenever you are actually drawing your elements because it's not very easy to draw all your stuff just out of basic shapes you also need to know how it connects to the body and how that actually works with the rest of your system that's why being an artist is hard it's not easy if it was easy everybody would do it but it's not easy it's actually quite freaking hard so Keep that in mind, and that's going to make it just a little bit easier for you to succeed. We talked a little bit about how we can use that to position ourselves in multiple different situations, how demonstrated how it's not a style-based choice. It can be done in very different ways and approaches. It's just a way and a methodology to learning how to actually structure your bodies. And then we talked about basic body shapes that are easy to work with. Uh, we talked about the beanbag. The beanbag is going to be one of my favorites because it's just nice and simple. It's nice and easy to be able to create awesome dynamic poses like that. Then we talked about the molar system. The molar system, well, we just kind of like, you know, like called it the molar system, but it's actually pretty cool. It's this right here. So essentially you create somewhat of like what a tooth looks like. And then you take that and you make that into... Your body. Right? So doing that gives you a very interesting result. It gives you nice and dynamic poses that you might not be like willing to draw normally whenever you're drawing. And it opens up a big world of possibilities when it comes down to actually understanding how your body can actually move. 
And then the other structures point that I was going with is actually more so of a boxy one. But this is more so structured towards just replicating realism and actually like getting how the body structures. I would recommend sticking to these two first, be able to actually master the fluidity that comes with drawing something in a circular shape, and then focus on something more boxy once you actually know what you're drawing. And the next thing that we learned, we learned how we can make money with our art. I will take a picture of this and put it onto my Instagram so you guys can have that. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of having all these like bases covered and the best of your abilities so that you guys can actually give yourselves a better understanding of what you're going to be faced with if you try to make this into your career. Then we talked a little bit about caricatures and how it's important and cool to be able to know how to use them as a base base component of being an artist as a living. Like especially if you're a pretty shy person, right? If you're a pretty shy person and you want to get out of your shell and you want to meet people and you want to like make an impact and you want to have that like social like stigma that comes with being the cool guy in a group, that is is going to be the key element for you to be able to actually do that. And I promise you it'll happen a lot if you actually have the balls to go out with a little sketch pad and then just go grab a pen and then just doodle people and give it to them. Doodle them, give it to them, and then just walk away. You don't even have to wait for a response. You will be the life of the party. You will be like so much more proud of your skills even if you are not the best character artist you will have an absolute blast and you will meet a lot of new friends so i highly recommend that you guys try that and you guys attempt that at least sometime this week if you guys do take a picture with the person that you guys draw and send it to me i would love to see what you guys create and how it worked out for you guys but until that time comes I believe we have gone through another 45 minute span. So I am going to call it a night for tonight. Hope you guys learned a little bit. I hope you guys understand a little bit better about what you are drawing and what you are supposed to be focusing on. If you did get something out of this, I would highly ask you guys to please go subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is the number one priority for me right now is to get those numbers and that YouTube to over I want to get it to over 80,000 so that we can actually get that plaque. I want that stupid plaque. That plaque will forever haunt me. I will be uncle of the year forever if I get that plaque. So make me a YouTuber, guys. Make me a YouTuber and go subscribe to my YouTube channel. But hope you guys had a wonderful time. I love you all. And like always, go live a little, love a little, love a little and draw a lot. Okay. Later. Take care guys.